Yo, what is good, everybody? It is your boy, Golden Golden Falls, Golden What Ifs, whatever you want to call me. And I am back. This is part four, excuse me, of What If Deku Was Sub-Zero. And as always, if you enjoy, please, please, please show some love. Leave a like, leave a sub, leave a comment down below. All that good stuff. Um, I love to see you guys commenting on the videos. Any suggestions for future What Ifs and future ideas you would like to see me do. Um... Obviously, I'm gonna say it. I'll probably say it a million times over the course of my time here, but um Yeah, I mean I can't please everybody at the end of the day I know some people want it this way some people want it that way um, And it's always split in half for the most part can't unfortunately um, <laughs> um, Please everybody so I kind of just do the uh, stories how I feel best or how I personally would like to see them be made now with that said I don't want to make waste, excuse me, more of your time, and I want to get right into it. So let's get it. Zuku Midoriya has now, or is now, ready for his final exam, and his final exam would be against the one, the only, All Might. Yes, All Might's gonna go head to head with a Zuku Midoriya, and let's just say they've done this quite a bit. But it seems as if All Might doesn't truly know what this guy is capable of or truly know what Azuku Midoriya is capable of. And that right there is something that All Might's going to have to think about while they battle and while they go head to head. Now, Azuku does have a partner in this fight and uh, it's not one that he's going to be too happy with, but he does have a partner. His partner is Katsuki Bakugo, and let's just say they don't get along very well. And that's probably a massive, and I mean massive, understatement. Because he flat out just doesn't get along with the, or they don't get along with each other at all. Azuku tries his best to, like, you know, tell Bakugo, like, oh yeah, this is where All Might's kind of weak. We could expose this or expose that. Nothing insane or anything like that. Not it's not like he's going to, or it's not like he is exposing the fact that he is some, you know, or that he's massively injured or something like that. But he is exposing certain um, fighting weaknesses that All Might actually portrays. So he's making sure to, you know, flat out tell Bakugo these things. But Bakugo is also just not listening, like at all. Like Bakugo is not listening at all he continues to kind of ignore and ignore and ignore and ignore zuku as he's trying to tell him like certain things that they pro they really should do but of course you know bakugo don't like all that so when they go into the battle or the fight it's kind of a very very basic one in terms of well they don't have any strategies nothing like that and they really should have but they didn't now this would lead to bakugo getting basically knocked out quicker than you could possibly imagine and well it's now time for Azuku Midoriya or Sub-Zero to take on his teacher and his mentor he even tells All Might this is where the student becomes the master and well honestly he should probably take off those weights if he wants a fair fight All Might would would kind of chuckle at this just a little bit as he as he takes off the weights and everybody is in shock and awe as he they watch the battle begin between Azuku Midoriya and All Might. They would go head to head, and it's obvious that Azuku has pretty damn or is pretty damn powerful. He begins to up his usage of one for all, and with his training with Gran Torino, he's able to utilize a higher dosage of one for all as well, being able to use closer to 50 or even 60% of one for all putting him on a physical strength of, well, even All Might himself. He would go head-to-head -head with All Might as they go blow for blow, but in terms of technique, Azuku is so much better. Being able to land crucial and critical blows to the stomach or to the body and so on and so forth. At the end of the day, Azuku seems to be just flat out just a better fighter. And Azuku's showing this off through, through also, you know, utilizing his his eyes powers and so on and so forth and more and more and everybody is in complete shock that azuku is doing is doing all of this that azuku is able to 
literally keep up if not is beating all might i mean everybody is watching this with their jaws on the floor practically and eventually azuku would get to the point where he then uses capture cuffs and captures um all might and all might is is slightly smirking slightly covered in ice but as the ice would crumble and go away the alarms would sound and they would say azuku midoriya and katsuki bakugo well sort of have passed the test in which azuku would help all might get all the ice off of him and stuff like that in which they shake hands and all might says that he know he knew he chose a proper uh, a proper person to take on the mantle and honestly he probably should have learned some martial arts himself in his heyday at least some really refined martial arts and he might have been even better in in hero work than he was even to this day azuku tells him that every single generation generation after generation is going to get better and better and better so he understands that you know he didn't decide to take on this martial arts burden how well azuku did in the first place but he tells him that he's nonetheless impressive and nonetheless the best teacher he could possibly have now with that said azuku would would obviously pass and go on to be able to you know do his do his his normal thing um in terms of well um going to the forest training camp and the forest training camp would be a perfect a perfect time um for azuku and a perfect time for uh for everyone else that is also there at the end of the day this is going to be their chance to work hard train hard get stronger and all of the above that's what they want to do and that's what they're going to do and that's what azuku really needs to do as well and he wants to and needs to get as strong as possible because he never knows or he's never going to know when those villains will strike again and when they would all go to the forest training camp and they would all get shoved off that cliff and have to fend through fend through the entire forest well let's just say the time is finally about to come the time where the villains come knocking because the league of villains would lay siege on the forest training camp but luckily enough not you know azuku is looking out for a couple of the people that are in bad positions aka coda He's able to be near Koda during the siege, and he goes head to head with the man by the name of Muscular. But Azuku tells him that if this right here, if they are the villains that laid waste to his village, laid waste to his family when he was just a baby, if these are truly the villains, and if he was even a part of it, even a tiny bit a part of it, that he's going to teach him a lesson that he'll never forget muscular kind of makes fun of him thinking oh i mean you're you're a joke there's no way that you're going to be able to stand a chance against me i'm way too strong i'm way too fast and whatever but of course there is no jokes to be made azuku midoriya begins to beat down muscular in front of coda and don't get me wrong coda is not like you know like he's not He's not scarred by the fact that Azuku's beating the hell out of him. He's more scarred by the fact that Muscular was threatening him, a little child. And Azuku, utilizing his ice and his ice weaponry, begins to neutralize the muscles and also begins to restrict him or restrict Muscular, utilizing some of his weaponry. And eventually, Muscular, beyond the ground, is covered in ice with barely a grasp of air left within him, and muscular would lay there completely exhausted completely torn to pieces and bruised up and bloodied as azuku would lay, lay him there and leave him there completely covered in ice he would pick up koda and to tells him to hold on tight and it's gonna get a little bit chilly as he's they skate off down the mountain and as he heads across to get him to safety to the rest of the campers Azuku would drop off Koda and look for his other classmates to try and help them to his best of ability or best of his ability but eventually when he would arrive he would see that a portal would be opening up and this portal would be taking Bakugo but as Bakugo is getting taken away well let's just say Shigaraki with his single arm would have his or Bakugo's neck grasped 
um, or yeah, Bakugo's neck grasped by his hand with only one finger up and tells, well, tells Azuku that if he wants to save the kid, that he better, he better come with them right now. The only way that he'll trade Bakugo right now is for him. Everybody's telling him not to do this, that this is a horrible idea, but Azuku walks over and tells them to calm down, to not do anything too rash, not do anything too crazy, to take a breath. As he walks through the portal, but they would drag Bakugo through as well, and completely, basically null and voiding the idea of letting Bakugo go. But this is exactly what Izuku thought they would do. There was no world where Izuku thought that they were going to make a proper treaty, a proper plan. So he knew that they would drag Bakugo here still. And they would capture them both and secure them both via handcuffs, unable to move and unable to actually utilize, quote unquote, their quirks. But here's the issue and here's the massive issue that is happening. They have quirk canceling cuffs, some that they actually stole recently. But here's the thing. Here is the thing. It seems as if, well, Azuku, well, it, see, it seems as well they have underestimated what Azuku can truly do. Because Azuku, well, let's just say he doesn't have a quirk necessarily. Yes, he has one for all, but he doesn't have a traditional quirk. And, well, his ice powers, they are not what they think it is. Some of the villains believe that it's some sort of quirk that was embedded within them, but it's not. It's not the case at all. And, well, the reality of it is he doesn't have a quirk. And, I'm gonna be honest, this is where things get a little bit tricky and a little bit, uh, a little bit intense. Because Azuku is sitting there and he's ready and waiting and get, waiting for his opening. And as he awaits and waits for his opening, he he kind of sends like say a signal to Bakugo, in which Bakugo is definitely paying attention because he is a hardhead. Don't get me wrong, he's annoying and he's and he's stupid sometimes. But at the same time, Bakugo knows that this is a very serious situation, so he. He basically awaits the signal from Azuku, but this signal didn't even be wasn't even needed because they just let Bakugo go. Since they want Bakugo to actually join them, they uncuff him, him allowing allowing him to now utilize his his quirk, and then eventually Azuku sees this and thinks, "Oh well, this feels like an opening." And as Bakugo kind of tells them to f off and slams an explosion in Shigaraki's face, he freezes off. He immediately would freeze off the handcuffs and just jump into action with Bakugo. Explosions, ice, and and kicks going everywhere as they begin to absolutely beat the snot out of most of the villains there. And Shigaraki can't even react as he's frozen to the ground and his arm frozen to a wall, stuck to the point where he can't actually utilize his quirk. And everybody else there, all the villains that are, are also there, like Dobby and, and, and people like that, are basically put in a position that they can't do anything. They're put in a position that they can't actually do a single thing but eventually the room would go chill the room would go stoic and the room would feel like death because a person would be rising out of a portal and a person would be rising out of his own his own doing and he would stand there with not even a facial expression to be seen. Well, literally not to be seen. Bakugo and Azuku turn around to see all for one. And all for one would tell them both that they have an opportunity here. An opportunity to join him, to join them, and to join what truly will be the future of this whole entirety of Japan. And if they decide to refuse, well, let's just say he won't be taking it very lightly. As this is said, though, All Might and many, many other heroes would break through the wall 
as all for one would tell Azuku and, and, and Bakugo that their time seems to be running out. All for one would would uh, would approach All Might, and a fight would begin as they would they would transfer off into a different location. And Azuku, Bakugo, and many of the other League of Villains who are you know encapsulated in ice at this moment, but all of them would appear as well. They would be given an opportunity and given an option to join All for One, or you can die alongside All Might himself and watch as Japan begins to burn. But All For One has underestimated what this truly is. He was seeking out the person that would have the, well, the ice powers or an ice quirk that originated from this clan. Thought it didn't exist, but then thought he exterminated all of them. Not because he thought they were a threat, but because he thought that it would have been useless to have some of them around if they didn't actually don the powers. But Izuku has those said powers he has them basically the perfect person for him to truly transfer his conscious and also his powers into but all for one well let's just say he didn't expect this person to even exist anymore he didn't expect this person to even well have uh, have any say or have any being in this place that they currently are but he is here and he is now and Sub-Zero is ready to end the reign of tyranny of All for One. And that's exactly what Izuku attempts to do. Bakugo would tell him that they should avoid this conflict. At least the one involving All for One. Because All for One is going to be a hell of a thing. And All for One is going to be a pretty scary component. Or opponent, excuse me. And, well... Bakugo would kind of give off this weird look as he's saying this, but and he says he hates to admit it, but this is all my territory, and Izuku says he agrees, and that's why it's his territory as well. He would blast over using his ice toward All for One and All Might, and he would tell All Might that he's not gonna let the old man go down, at least not to this ugly, ugly thing that stands in front of them. And they and he tells him that they've been training together for a while now and they're all synced up so he hopes that he's ready to actually fight and give it all he has and to not hold back and not to worry about himself not to worry about um azuku that he has it completely handled like he has everything good to go and not to worry about a single thing so he absolutely just goes at it i mean they go at it with all for one and Azuku utilizing his his ice and his powers. I mean, it's putting all for one on the back foot. And the strength of All Might is still pretty comparable. It's it's no joke. And the strength of All Might is allowing Azuku and allowing Bakugo to or Izuku and All Might, excuse me, to um to keep up with All for One for the mass majority of the fight. So much so that All for One tries his best to do a latch ditch, ditch effort to mortally wound one of them but it doesn't even work azuku would tell all for one that he is going to be stopped here and now and his entire league of villains crew will also follow suit azuku's basic body or his body for for the most part begins to be encapsulated in ice and azuku tells him that he's been working on something for a while now and this right here will bring everything to the forefront ice surrounding his body like a complete and utter ice um like ice armor and he would dash toward all for one taking blows from the black tendrils but he's able to keep up and eventually get hands on all for one surrounding him and ice slightly enough to land to land a punch of his own and then a double detroit smash into a double united states of smash would lead to all for one crumbling at all all might's and azuku midoriya's feet azuku would then immediately summon a blade of ice and put it to the neck of all for one in which all might would look at him slightly and tell him that a choice will always be made and a choice he made a long time ago well let's just say makes it so that he definitely deserves it trust me yeah trust me that he says that he understands 
he knows that he deserves it and he can tell that Izuku is hurting and can tell that this is this feels like the right idea but he tells Izuku that he lost a a, a mother figure a mentor and all of the above because of all for one and he tells Izuku that as much as he would love to do this as much as he would love to to end the life of all for one as well it's not what you should do and it's not what you're supposed to do in which azuku would hear him and say that it would be so easy so easy just to end him so easy to put him down for good but easy well easy isn't always the right answer he tells all might that He's going to he's going to head off now. He needs to head home. And he tells him that uh well, he'll see him the next time they train and he'll see him at school very soon. In which All Might tells the kid that he's proud of him. That he's trained the kid, he's helped the kid and he knew that this him being the successor to well, you know, himself would be the best and the most logical choice. And he makes that very known every single day. Azuku nods and as he basically shows All Might like, yeah, I, I thank you, and I know. And as he as he leaves, All Might would just allow the kid the kid to leave and uh, and to head off. And Azuku would just await his next you know session with his class, and it would be a pretty basic one too, just normal school for a little bit. But then they would actually start the act of training and the act of like actually full on training, doing super moves and stuff like that. But Izuku already has so many different super moves and so many different things that um, that allow him to be capable on so many different levels. But one thing he didn't know and one thing he was surprised by would be someone approaching him during one of these training sessions. Now, it wouldn't be just All Might. It would be All Might and one other person, someone he actually doesn't know much about. But Aizawa would tell them or tell him to really pay attention to what's happening and to really pay attention um, to what happens when you do good things. Azuku hears this and he kind of, um, kind of shrugs his shoulders a little bit, but he would then walk with them as, well, it seems as if someone is there to give him something that that Izuku was not expecting. And that was a provisional hero license. And everybody, or well, Izuku and also even All Might, would be pretty shocked by this. I mean, this is insane. This doesn't happen ever. Why would they do this? But they would say that Izuku was captured. He kept a level head, and when he had a chance to end a villain that, well, not many, el not many other people would would neglect the chance to take out well he decided to show him mercy decided to show him that well he that being a hero is so it, it has so many layers and so much better than being somebody that takes revenge in which azuku says that he appreciates he appreciates it and he truly believes that there's a chance or there is a part of him that that definitely feels that he deserves it, but he's still honored to know that some someone else is going to give him the opportunity to give him the chance of being a true or a licensed quote unquote hero. In which they do say it's only a provisional hero license. So he's not like a full on um, hero just yet, but it is something that would give him the next kind of step to his journey. And Azuku is happy to hear this. In which All Might even says that with that said, and with all of that, you know, cemented, that he might as well tell him now what's going on and actually tell him now um, some news he got. He got some news from somebody known as Sir Night Eye, and he should be getting some more, you could say, information or some more heads up very, very soon. And before you know it, Azuku would be actually getting greeted by by someone by the name of mirio while his class is out doing their own provisional hero license exam and he would and mirio would tell him that sir night eye wants to give him an offer and sir night eye wants to give him an offer to join their agency and take his hero work to the very next level because he knows that he is the successor of all might 
but on top of that probably a better choice than anyone could possibly have been now mirio doesn't tell him that specifically in terms of the whole successor thing because let's be honest mirio wouldn't know but sir night i would definitely bring this up when they would meet for the very first time telling him that he he did question all might he did um question him fully on who he should really pass the baton to but it seems like he passed the baton to the right person especially after the display that was shown and given well not too long ago he tells the kid that they got a mission and they have something very very serious going on and they're going to need his help so that's exactly what Izuku's going to do take on the mission of stopping overhaul the leader of the shia hazaikai but that is for part five of what if deku was sub-zero so if you enjoyed make sure to show some love leave a like leave a sub leave a comment down below all that good stuff i hope you guys enjoyed the video and um yeah that's really all i gotta say hope y'all enjoyed and i hope all y'all have an amazing day later